Sometimes you find technology where you might not expect. Ex officio garments offer technology and features like stain and water resistant fabrics, pants that become shorts in an instant, indestructible buttons and security zip pockets, built in insect repellent, even UV protection and a multi position sun collar. Our clothing is technically designed from head to toe. Ex officio, made to last, made to protect, made to adventure. Although it was recently named a UNESCO World Heritage Site, until 2004, Panama's Coiba Island hosted a large penal colony that was completely off limits to any and all outsiders. Jim's mission is to join Pesca Panama to investigate the remote and secretive island and to explore what is considered by many to be some of the most fertile fishing grounds in the world. We are in Panama uh, fishing with Pesca Panama, our good friends, they have a floating lodge that we've been staying at. And uh, basically what we do is they, they, they move the floating lodge from spot to spot and then we run out here on these very, very nice boats and um, take the kayaks from spot to spot. There's a lot of different really, really cool islands. I mean, we were just in these really beautiful spots, very tropical islands, fishing some pretty sketchy areas, uh, a lot of boiler rocks, a lot of moving water, and got some great rooster fishing in yesterday. best place I've ever gone kayak fishing. I've gone kayak fishing a lot of places. This place is so fishy. The water's lively. Uh, you know, and we've been, we've been going into some danger close situations. It's about as adrenalized as you can get when you hook up on a jack. <laughs> fished hard all day. Um, fished again a lot of, around a lot of islands and uh, very surgy area. It's a little different from what I'm used to fishing rooster fish. In, in Baja, we fish along a lot of sandy beaches. Bye -bye. Here we're fishing along these steeper islands. Uh, again, a lot of surge, a lot of water movement, but that seemed to be where the, the fish were biting the best. Uh, caught uh, quite a few really good quality rooster fish, uh, one Kubera snapper. So um, overall, Beautiful. for our first day here, and just still trying to figure the whole situation out, it yeah, was baby. A, a very, very good day. Let's get fish. Yeah, really, my goal was to get some more rooster fish. They're such a great fight. And uh, right off the bat, first day, got into, actually got into about five rooster fish. And I landed successfully two of them, but uh, they were all just a great fight. And they also seem to hang out in the coolest spots, spots where the waves are roll, just rolling in and smashing into the cliffs. They, they seem to hang in the aggressive areas. So when you hook them, you're almost you're 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 half battling the waves and half battling the fish today uh we've been fishing koiba island um came over to a spot what uh we were called, it was called the Snook Hole, and uh, it held true to that name because uh, I think Paul was about three casts into it and got himself a nice snook. Red out of your dog tired, tied to the world with 
the skinny telephone wire If you don't write, then I won't call Well, hang for the time as a cause of it all The cars on the freeway look like ants in a row The hustle and the bustle and the go, go, go A little bit later, I got one, and then uh, Paul got another one. Yeah, baby! Woo! That is a good tip there, man. Yes! Look at Paul. This is what I wanted to catch, too, and it's one of the, definitely on my list of fish I wanted to catch here. What a beautiful fish. Oh, third cast in that little sliver of beach, right on the beach, and jumping, jumping, jumping. Two snook and got into the jacks. I mean, th that's the interesting thing to me. The snooks and the jacks are intermingled right around those rocks where the bait was popping off. You just didn't know what you might catch. Folks on the stand, a bank book Bible in a gold-plated pew. They see Jesus' face on a hundred dollar bill The size of their wallet, that's the size of their soul They get down on their knees, they pray to silver and gold Cars on the freeway look like ants in a row The hustle and the bustle and the go Got a jack, some snapper, just very, very cool Very, very fun, fun fishery over in the, in the snook hole um, I, I paddled out, saw some breaking fish And got a, a really good jack on, the, on my bass gear Which was just... A good fight. I mean, catching a uh, you know 12-pound jack revol, and we call them Toro, the bull, because they're so tough. And uh, on the on the bass gear was amazing. This is my spotted bay bass rod. I usually catch one or two-pound fish on this thing. And Jack, or we call him Toro down in Baja, are notoriously tough. And and this guy just put up a heck of a fight. Man, what a good fight on that light gear. Grunting crocodiles. Jay has suggested that we uh, come up this river and uh, give that a try, see if there was some fish in there. And it... Saw a few crocs earlier on and they were not big and they were just out in the, in the, in the creek. And, um, you know, it, it's always in my mind. It's like, okay, the crocs, the crocs, the crocs. It's all everybody talked about. But... I don't know, 15, 20 feet in front of me, a croc came flying off the side right in front of me. Flashes in the water, and in a flash, the thing is gone. It was amazing how fast that thing moved.
Here it's like you're slow trolling a live bait along a sheer cliff. That's right, and you know, when the fish runs into shore, there's nowhere to land. It's more like crash land. Yeah, there's a lot more of that. Uh, hold onto the rod and hold onto your paddle and direct yourself. Try to stay out of the yeah. the dicey areas, and I think that's one of the things that made this trip so amazing. Was the, the, the extreme kayak fishing. I mean, wasn't necessarily the extreme big fish. It was the extreme elements. It takes a tough fish to live in that neighborhood, you know, they're strong. To live in there, you gotta be strong. Since he was a child, Jim has dreamed of the famed Hannibal Banks. Of course, he's always been told that the fish here are just too big and the water's too exposed for kayak fishing. Jim's personal mission is to prove everyone wrong. We are hanging out in pretty much one of the sickest spots that I've ever seen. Paul, Ken, and I are each trolling these very large bonita that the, uh, the guys jigged up for us this morning. Very strong bait. <laughs> That was, that was crazy. Yeah. yeah, that was pell mell. And on the popper. On the popper, yeah. Poppers. I've never I've never caught a tuna on a popper. What an exciting way to get it to see a tuna come out of the water and crash on a, on a surface popper. Corpus literally led Ken and I to where I hooked up. I mean, right. We were uh, going along in squadron formation and they peeled off to the right. It's like, hey, the birds are going off. We can reach them this time. When, when we were came up on you as you were landing your fish and you had all those porpoise still hanging with you while you yeah. were landing your fish. I mean, they were checking it out. What an, what an incredible uh, fishery. I mean, just to, to be out there with that, that wildlife in, in such a place that, I said, you, you put out that, that popper or that live bait, you never know. The anticipation. Said I saw these birds working outside of where we were earlier. <laughs> and I took a chase after them, picked up my paddling speed, and got hit and lost my bait. So I'm like, became intent on staying with these birds. Got a new bait, stayed with them, started paddling faster again. Right when I get out to the birds again, I got hit. <laughs> oh. And man, this is a strong fish. I don't know how big it is, but it's strong. <laughs> I 
think I pissed him off. He's a strong, freaking fish, my friend. Like, well, you know, I gotta give it a go. I mean, I gotta try and land this fish on myself. So I got the gaff out, and I reached down, and I stuck him, and I, I hit him kind of up near the top of the head, which is generally where I like it to gaff fish. But I hit him and it was just like, I think it was like I stuck my gaff in a piece of dynamite because it just blew up. I mean, it was an explosion next to my kayak. Hannibal Bank, Panama. Two and a half hours on a 500 pound tuna. <laughs> Don't want to catch you looking with your lit eye. There he is, right there. He's coming up on your left. Now really wanted up. to get that pitch, really wanted to land it. And I, I just, at that point, I'm like, look, we're going to have to land it on the boat. We're going to have to have the guys on the, on the boat gaff it. So I just kept at it, kept at it, and, and finally got it circling around. Got a big, doing a big circle and it came right uh, by the side of the boat. And it, again, it just blew up and to the point where they actually had to put two gaffs in it. So and that's at over three hours. The guys on the boat had to put two gaffs in it. So I, I know for a fact I, I could not have personally landed that fish for myself so thank goodness they were there and we were able to get that fish up and it's still um, a great kayak fight and great kayak catch I did hook it from the kayak I fought it from the kayak I did my best to gaff it from the kayak but uh, we had to land it from the boat but uh, I'm still I'm, I'm good with that the way they fight so straight up and down thank God I had that Tiagra 2 speed that really helped me gain some line on it there at the end but I'm worked over man I am worked over I'm so excited though I mean you know, my biggest tuna before this off a of kayak, uh, 35 pounds. So I got it beat for by almost 100 pounds. No way I could have gaffed this. No freaking way. Oh. <laughs> Tail's still on the ground. <laughs> oh man. The ass kicker. So the energy. <laughs> Right now, I plan taking pictures. Oh, okay. Later on, it's catch fish until my arms are noodles. That's quality. Let's see, that's a that's a right foot. So I guess we got to go fishing for the left foot now. If that's what I've got to do. Right there's one of them Montana stripers. I think I hooked the other one in today in this lake. I'm pretty sure I did. It's the one that jumped up and hit me in the chest. I got a little hole right here where the bill got me. Right here. I've been traveling down. They just turned back around. Well, I feel so tired. Yeah, I feel so Shouts home right now, cause I just wanna lie down. <laughs>